When we say styrofoam, we're actually using a trademarked name. Technically, styrofoam refers to a specific type of extruded polystyrene foam made by the Dow Chemical Company. However, most people use styrofoam as a catch-all term for polystyrene foam. While the name might sound new to some, it's really just the lightweight material we commonly encounter in cups, packaging, and insulation. It's actually pretty fascinating to learn about. Sure, as kids, we might have chewed on it, but there's so much more to it. So, how is this material made? Join me as we walk through the step-by-step -step process behind its creation. Stick around until the end. I promise you'll learn something new. Welcome to Grow. Our journey begins with polystyrene resin, which is derived from styrene, a liquid hydrocarbon. Styrene is a byproduct of petroleum refining and is the key molecule in this entire process. First, styrene undergoes polymerization, a chemical reaction that links its molecules into long chains, forming polystyrene. The result is a rigid plastic that forms the foundation of the foam we know as styrofoam. The polystyrene resin arrives at manufacturing facilities in small bead-like pellets. It's usually called pucks. These pellets can be processed in various ways depending on the intended product, whether it's a disposable coffee cup or building insulation. To transform the rigid polystyrene into lightweight foam, manufacturers add an expanding agent, for example, pentane. It is a liquid hydrocarbon that evaporates easily. This agent is mixed with the polystyrene pellets during manufacturing. When heated, the pentane vaporizes, causing each tiny bead to puff up like a balloon, giving styrofoam its airy structure. Now, we enter the pre-expansion phase. The polystyrene pellets, combined with the expanding agents, are placed into a pre-expander machine where steam is introduced. As the temperature rises, the pentane inside the beads vaporizes, causing them to expand up to 40 times their original size. Think of it like popcorn popping, but on a microscopic scale. After pre-expansion, the beads cool and stabilize and are stored in silos for a period known as aging. During this time, they release any remaining pentane and achieve a uniform size and density, which makes them easier to mold. Once the pre-expanded beads are ready, they are molded into their final shapes. This process involves placing the beads into molds, which could be shaped like cups, blocks, or almost anything. Steam is introduced again to heat the beads, causing them to expand even more and fuse together. This fusion process is essential because it forms a solid piece of foam without any adhesives as the beads bond naturally. After molding, the foam is cooled and ejected from the mold, ready for further processing or packaging. Not all styrofoam is the same. There are two main types expanded polystyrene and extruded polystyrene, but they are actually very similar in terms of raw materials. Though what makes them very different is their manufacturing processes. It gives giving both their properties. EPS is made through the bead expansion process described earlier and is lightweight, cost-effective, and commonly used for packaging, disposable containers, and lightweight construction. XPS, on the other hand, is made using a continuous extrusion process, creating dense, water-resistant sheets ideal for insulation and building applications. Now let's address the environmental concerns. Styrofoam has a bad reputation because traditional polystyrene foam is non-biodegradable and can persist in the environment for centuries. Also, the production process involves petroleum-based materials and can release harmful gases if not managed properly. However, some manufacturers are exploring alternative blowing agents that are less harmful to the environment. There is also growing interest in recycling polystyrene foam, though it's challenging due to its lightweight and bulky nature. If you like chemistry and very good, you could try your luck and add your name to one of the greats. Who knows? But specialized facilities can compact the foam and repurpose it in products like picture frames, crown molding, and even new foam materials. So it's still got its advantages. Did you know styrofoam is made up of 95% air? That's why it's so lightweight and buoyant. During World War II, polystyrene was used on a large scale as a substitute for rubber, and its foam form 
later revolutionized industries like packaging and construction. Styrofoam's insulating properties made it ideal for packaging sensitive products and providing cushioning during shipping, leading to its widespread use. As we aim for a more sustainable future, research is underway to develop biodegradable versions of polystyrene foam using plant-based resins or fungi. While these alternatives are still in early stages, they hold promise for reducing the environmental impact of foam products. Furthermore, efforts to reduce styrofoam waste through improved recycling and reusing techniques could help mitigate its environmental footprint. So there you have it, the journey of styrofoam, from tiny polystyrene beads to the versatile material we use every day. Despite its environmental challenges, innovations are paving the way for a more sustainable future. The next time you sip coffee from a foam cup or unpack a new gadget cushioned in styrofoam, you know how it was formed. Maybe one day that cup will be made from biodegradable foam, proving that even the simplest materials can evolve for the better. Thank you for watching. If you benefited from our video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories behind the smallest details. We got other interesting video, click the left or right video and enjoy.